Okay, so I just found out that you don't actually get to the credits again after you beat Dark Gaia. At least from the stage select. I don't know if it would have been different if I ac accessed the um, the boss through like Eggman Land itself. Uh, but I I am not. I don't want to go through that for the boss again just to try and get to the credits. So what's happening instead is that I'm just going to talk about my thoughts of the game with while you just see this image of Sonic and Chip here because yeah I think that that just is the best uh, compromise for this. Now one thing I just realized before like doing this little like uh, final thought segment is that I did forget to show off the Eggman Land hub. Basically you just uh, go to the area that you see in the in the cutscene. Uh, you see like the giant Eggman statue and there's Obviously, you get the um, hot dog vendor for the for the um, hot dog missions and whatnot, and it's the only hub. It's the only area in the game that only has one hub world. There's all the stages, bosses, and the tails like tornado stage all in that area, and you also you also get like a shop and a bunch of robots around that will talk to you, and their names are like based on uh, release dates of various Sonic games. I, f I believe it's um, there's one 1991, which is obvious, and then there's a 2006 one, which is great because he he also the robot starts glitching out and like being all weird and stuff because you know 06, so that's pretty funny. And like there's a bunch of random food you can buy that doesn't really give you a lot of XP. And Chip like talks about how it. It's disgusting and everything, which is great. So uh, I, I'm kind of sucks that I forgot to show that off, but it's nothing too crazy. But it's just a nice little extra that you can, you you can see that stuff once you be in the game. You can't actually go to Eggman Land's hub until you beat uh, Dark Gaia because if you try to, like, go into the Eggman Land like menu thing. It will just go to where you are in the story until you beat it. So that's why I couldn't really show it off in the main game. I probably should have shown it off during the DLC. But I, it kind of just com completely eluded me. Um, I was basically just in a rush to finish the game. And by the time I remembered that I should have shown the hub off. I, it was kind of just too late. Like maybe I'll show off like a little clip of it. In, in this little, like, ending section here, but, again, it's nothing, it's nothing really too crazy that you missed. Regardless of that, though, that's the end of the playthrough. <laughs> An LP that took way too long to finish, and it's finally come to a close. And I did, I did genuinely enjoy doing this, like, it was a fun experience going through both the Wii and the HD version simultaneously, seeing how things... Uh, change from each version, seeing how, like, just how different both of them are. Like, these two games are, like, so different, yet so similar at the same time. It's kind of fascinating, and I, part of me kind of m misses this, um, time period for gaming, where the Nintendo consoles were, like, or the Wii specifically was nowhere near as powerful as the, as the competition at the time. So, the Developers had no choice but to make a separate version. And then, I guess there's also stuff with handholds in, as well. Like, if you had a console release and a handheld release, mo more often than not, they're going to be different version, like, different games as well. Like, Colors DS is a pretty good example of that. Of that. And, uh, now, it's just an interesting time period where, like, you just get two different versions of, of the same game. And while I wouldn't really say the Wii version holds a candle to how good the HD version is, at least in my opinion, I'd still say that it's, it's no slouch. I still enjoy it a fair bit, and it does a decent amount of things that I prefer in than the HD one, such as uh, mainly how the Sun and Moon medals work. I like the fact that they are just rewards for getting good good ranks 
finishing missions and you get rewarded by going through these guy gate areas that give you more items more missions to do and just extra side content and i feel like that makes more sense just making the making the medals primarily for side uh side content in the game and not used for main progression like that i feel the, that design makes more sense for the metal system rather than how like yeah in the hd version when you get to the end of the game at about day requires 120 sun medals which is quite um like quite a lot that's over half of the sun medals in the game so if you aren't like diligent in looking around for those things like especially in the night levels you're gonna be going you're going to be looking around for ages trying to get past some roadblocks and again i feel like they should have just kept that stuff for the extra acts the stuff that you don't need to play and especially since like 120 is like kind of ludicrous <laughs> like they really should have like handled that a lot differently i do enjoy looking for the medals though it it's weird i in I think the medals are handled better in the Wii version, but I also enjoy collecting them more in the in the Wii in the, the words. <laughs> I enjoy collecting them more in the HD version because I just like collecting things, and I enjoy the fact that you can see how many medals are in are in each stage. So there's a good counter for you, and you can ex and you can also exit levels like and still keep the medals you got so you don't have to like finish the stage just to keep the the items i don't know if that's the case with like the other collectibles like the vhs vhs tapes and all that uh, like books and all that other stuff but at least for the medals i know you can like just leave the level and be fine and um yeah that's another thing like i just I prefer how the items are handled in the hd version because you can actually see what you're getting it's kind of a minor thing like the the wii version just you just collect like question mark capsules and you see what you get when you finish the stage which isn't the worst thing in the world i guess like it it's kind of minor in the grand scheme but i just like the fact fact that in the hd version you do actually see what you're getting and it's just a little thing that boosts it boost the hd version just just a little bit it's not it's nothing great like it doesn't change the game that much but it's just kind of nice and again the the fact that the medals are like items you collect rather than re rewards for finishing stages makes it so there's a lot of stuff to find and the werehog the werehog stages are in my opinion really fun to just explore and find things in and i feel like I feel like if that exploration factor wasn't there, then the night levels wouldn't be as fun as I find them to be. Like, if the Wii, Wii version had a better idea of how to how to balance the platforming and the combat, I'll admit, and it doesn't have as, as many collectibles as, like, the HD night levels, but it does still have a fair bit, so there is still a reason to explore. And I do like that there's some sections where you have to find like three keys or wherever they are <laughs> to open the, the next area of the stage. I do like that. I do like how there's reasons to explore outside of just the collectibles sometimes. And while it's still, it's still not like a favorite level of mine, I, I've talked at nauseum about how Tunan Night Act 1 on the HD version kind of leaves a lot to be desired. I do at least like the fact that there is like a little shortcut, like a side path you can go to and instead of like going through the main part of the stage. And yeah, I don't know. I, I just enjoy the fact that there's so much to look around and find. I feel like the combat could be improved upon slightly. Well, maybe not slightly. There, there's a lot they could do, do to make it better. But I do think the Werehog's combat is a lot more exciting exciting and uh, thrilling than people like to make it out to be it's definitely not like god of war level or like dmc or anything like that but i do feel like as a simple beat-em-up style action game i feel like it does the job well enough 
I do think that there could have been a bit more enemy variety, but I do think the the enemies they do have is uh, solid enough for what it is, and there's a decent amount of depth you can find as you care enough to dig deep into it. Like I like the fact that you can use your shield to cancel animations early and uh, like get out of sit bad situations, and there's a decent amount of moves that are good for different situations. Like, there's a roundhouse kick move that sends enemies all around you away. So if you're getting surrounded, that's a good use of uh, your, of your toolkit. And good... You have good dash moves. And uh, just wide, wide sweeping attacks and all this stuff. And... Yeah, like, again, it, while it's not anything too groundbreaking in terms of action games standards, I still think it's a pretty fun time overall. I... Definitely, I'd say in terms of um, just the Wii versus the HD version for the Werehog, I'd say I generally prefer the HD stages, but I will say that the Wii version does have some standouts as well. I'd say Tuna Knight on the, on the Wii version is pretty much just better across the board. And then there's, I get there's also Adabat, which I think is overall better than the Wii, even if Act 2 is kinda, uh, not that interesting, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't know, I, it's definitely a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the, uh, continent, like, the country and whatnot, which, where I, like, being, like, it, it's, it depends on the con, or, or, it depends on the, um, country, like, the different areas for where, I prefer either the Wii or the HD stages, but yeah, generally I prefer the HD ones, uh, especially with the day stages, like most of the day stages I think are better on the HD version, but I will say that I, I do I do still get a kick out of the Wii version as well, the, des the design to have the boost like separ separated into like different sections is a little bit weird though. I'm not entirely sure how to feel about that. I feel like if they just had it like a normal boost, it would be a lot more fun. Because you can tell that they made the areas a lot more wide to compensate compared to the HD version. Because if they didn't do that, you'll, you'd probably end up like bashing into a bunch of walls constantly. So they had to have like a, a lot more space to compensate so you, so you can like actually move around decently well enough. So that that's kind of weird. I don't. I know that the Wii version is also made by Dimps, and they've al already made like Rush, which had like a regular boost system. So I'm not really sure why they decided to make the Wii version the way it was. Maybe it was because they were too scared that like it was the first time they were doing a boost game in 3D, and they weren't sure how that kind of speed would have worked in a 3D space. So they like did the little seg like segregated boost system to to uh try and be safe with it like i i'm just spitballing here like maybe that's the case maybe it was another factor like maybe they just wanted to be different <laughs> but i don't know i feel like if they just made it the same boost as the hd version it would have made more sense especially since since uh colors like the next game they just do that <laughs> so yeah I, I i'm not really sure why they did the boost like that but it works fine for what it is. I do like the action chain system where like you can chain co like combos together like and get like a bunch of boost energy. That's cool. And I do think like the Unleashed in general gets a gets uh, crap for being fairly linear. Like I know a lot of people don't really care for Unleashed too much because of that. And while I will admit that Unleashed is definitely one of the most linear games in the series, it still does have like a crap ton of alternate paths and whatnot. I will say that they tend to be a lot more hidden than other Sonic games, so if you do just care for like going for the main path and not really exploring the levels, then yeah, you'll, you'll find that the game is really linear. But if you do care to like look around and find these alternate pathways, you'll be surprised to know that there's quite a lot there that you missed, especially with stuff like. Jungle Joyride and Eggman Land, 
the latter especially, like, there's so many paths in Eggman Land that even I don't know about, and it, considering how huge that stage is, like, you're gonna be, like, finding new stuff for a long time in that level. And even stuff like Jungle Joyride, like, from the start of the level, there's pathways everywhere, and, like, it's definitely no, like, it, it's def it definitely doesn't get into, like, some of the big stage bigger stages in, like, Generations, or anything like that. But it still definitely it's it still definitely has a lot of diff different pathways to to explore, and I like the fact that it feels like a good final main day stage as well. Like that's another thing I like about this game as well is the fact that it genuinely challenges the player, and it gradually gets more difficult as you progress through the game. Because that's my issue with a lot of um recent Sonic games, let's say, the difficulty doesn't really get that much more uh, challenging put past, like, the intro stages. Like, it definitely- it gets more challenging, obviously. Like, it's- like, the first stage is still gonna be easier than, like, Asteroid Coaster in Colors, for instance. But I still feel like it doesn't, gr like, build up in difficulty enough. And I feel like Unleashed does a much better better job at that. Like, Windmill Isle is, is much easier than Empire City. And, like, Shamar is much harder than, say, like, I don't know, Missouri, for instance. And I feel like... I, I like categorizing the game into two sections. There's the first half, which you have, like, the first half of the game, obviously. And then once, you, once the second Eggman, Eggman cutscene plays... And you get to Shamar, Empire City, Adabai, and Egg Eggman Land. I like to classify that as the second half. And the second half challenges the player way more. And I I don't know, I just I just like that. I, I like the fact that Unleashed is one of the mo one of the more challenging Sonic games, mainly on the 3D side. And it feels a lot more rewarding when you do get S ranks. Like getting an S rank in a in a unleashed level is <laughs> it's a pretty similar feeling to getting like an A rank in SA2 for instance because it, it requires you to fully master the level get a bunch, get as many rings and defeat as many enemies as, as you can and whatnot and you aren't going to be getting S ranks by just farting <laughs> like some of the later games do and I enjoy that a lot like a ranking system should show you how how you're improving through the game and like getting better at mastering levels and whatnot, and Unleashed does that really well. I think. I think. I do think the. I do enjoy the Wii version's ranking ranking system, but not as much. Primarily for the fact that the day stages only require you to just beat them fast. I think the night levels do a much better better job, where it's based on your time, how many rings you got, how many dark gear energy you found, and all that stuff. So it basically requires you to master the levels, similar to how the HD version does it. And yeah, I just enjoy that a lot. It's a good a good ranking system can go a long way. And that elevates the game quite a bit in my eyes. And it's one of those things where you don't need to worry about it. Like if you just care about getting to the end of the game, you don't care about getting like S ranks, like you don't care if you just keep getting E ranks for the whole game. <laughs> like it doesn't affect your gameplay really. It's it's primarily a addition for hardcore players, like people who want to get more bang for their buck and act, like master the stages, put the hours they need to like get to that point. But again, if you just want to get to Dark Guy and finish the game, there's nothing stopping you from just getting like D ranks the entire time because the the ranks don't like don't stop you from progressing or anything it's not it doesn't roadblock you like the moon and like sun and moon medals do which which i think is good and yeah I, I don't know i i really like i really love this game like i said it a few times throughout this playthrough but this is overall my favorite sonic game it other games in the series definitely do certain things better like some people would argue generations had has a uh, more uh, solid level design and colors i i don't know like it 
I would I would definitely have to think a lot about the specifics, uh, but overall, like as a general package, I'd say Unleashed HD is my favorite Sonic game overall. Like I love the different areas you can go to. The visuals are unparalleled in this series. Like there's no Sonic game that looks quite as good as this one, at least at the moment. <laughs> I'm I'm I have a feeling that Frontiers is gonna top top this game in terms of visuals, but I will. <laughs> I'll I'll see for that when that game actually comes out because we know so little right now. The game does look beautiful from what we've seen, but yeah, that's about all I can say about that at the moment. But yeah, visually this game is stunning. I love like the Wii version as well is also no slouch like I've said. While it doesn't have the HD visuals or anything like that, it still has very good coloring. It de it has like very nice looking like textures. Like, just visually, the game still looks really good for, like, the Wii standards. Well, even then, like, the game, I wouldn't say, is super good looking on the Wii. Because, keep in mind, the game was also made for the PS2. So they couldn't go too crazy with the Wii visuals. Because, you know, they'll, you'd basically be, be making free versions at that point. So the Wii version is basically just an upscaled PS2 version. Which... To be fair, it still looks gr really great, even when you put that into consideration. And I know some people actually prefer how the Wii version looks, which I can kind of see to an extent. And it does have, like, a unique style, I guess you could say. But overall, I'd definitely say that the HD version is the much better looking looking game. Not just because it's, because it's HD, but personally, I prefer the colouring. I think the textures are just generally better better designed i think it obviously pops a lot more and there's a lot more detail going on in the backgrounds and whatnot while it's true that some we we version stages have better draw distance and it's really impressive in some levels like chunan night act 3 i want to say where you're on the great wall of china and you see like the great wall all the way back into the distance and like it's a massive, like a really impressive shot for the Wii, like stuff like that, like and other stages like Jungle Joy at Night as well, where you see all the waterfalls in the distance, like stuff like that is beautiful, and like again the Wii version is definitely no slouch in terms of that, but overall I prefer the HD version visually, and like with the back backgrounds as I was saying earlier, you can see like houses, mountains like waterfalls and all this like crazy detail like even in this image i'm showing on the screen right now like you see all these buildings like the bell tower in the background like the windmills all, all this other stuff like there's so much detail just basically everywhere you look in unleashed and it it's crazy like the the amount of like effort they must have gone through to make every world like feel complete they, they feel like actual places that people would live in with all this extra detail and like just light the lighting especially as well is also like amazing in this game and yeah, they, man I, I just I could go gushing for hours on how Unleashed like just looks like <laughs> so good <laughs> like visually Unleashed is definitely one of my favorite looking games just period like I I'm, I struggle to think of games that look quite as good as this. Even now, like, g games nowadays definitely still look, like, really good. And visually, like, in terms of, like, textures and all this other fancy, schmancy, like, word, all these other sm fancy, smashy words and whatnot, they definitely look better than Unleashed in a technical sense. But I feel like Unleashed is still one of the best looking games that I've played. Just because of his art style and the lighting and everything, like, I feel like the art style just pops so much in Unleashed. And this is definitely my favourite looking style for the series. And, I don't know, he the Hedgehog engine just did wonders for this game. Like, this was definitely a great first showcase for what the Hedgehog engine could do. And, yeah, it did kind of come out, come out of price. As you... As you saw throughout the playthrough, especially in some of the later stages, 
this game doesn't perform the most gracefully at times. Uh, like Jungle Droid, you have like so many frame dips that you're basically be you're basically playing a PowerPoint presentation, and uh, yeah, it's it's not <laughs> it's not great sometimes, which is why I recommend playing this game on an Xbox Series S or X, so you can get that 60 frames experience without any of those frame dips. But unfortunately for me, I don't ha I don't have access to those consoles, so I had to play on my old PS3 copy, and that <laughs> if you don't if you don't know, the PS3 version doesn't have the best uh, track record when it comes to the frame rate. the The 360 version also has like frame rate issues and whatnot, but it's also a lot more stable than the PS3 one, so. <laughs> it's definitely not recommended to play the PS3 one unless it's like the only way you can play the game, which is basically why I play, played it on the PS3. I don't have access to a 360. or Well, I, I have an Xbox One and I, I'm pretty sure Unleashed is backwards compatible, but that would also still be the 360 version. Like, if I'm going to get the game on, on, a, on an Xbox, Xbox console, I may as well just have a series x at that point so it it is what it is i think the game is still perfectly playable for the most part like it, it gets kind of ludicrous at some points but i i think i managed <laughs> fine enough so yeah that that's a thing i guess so if you do want to play this game for the first time like you're interested and you know about all that stuff I would rec I would definitely recommend playing this game on the Series S or X, unless they decide to port this game to Steam, which would also would be that would also be another option, but God knows if that will ever happen, so I'll leave that I'll leave that up in the air, I guess, depending on how good a PC version ends up being anyway, because if it turns out how Colors Ultimate did at launch, then oh boy that would be ugly. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, that, that's all that, I guess. I pretty much said all I needed to throughout the, throughout the game. I, I've kind of just been rambling about just various stuff in this game, and there's not too much else I can add that I haven't already said throughout the playthrough. I will say that the, I really do enjoy how this, how the story in this game is a good mix between comedy and being serious. Like, you have a lot of good comedic moments with Chip, especially with the free secret CG cutscenes you can find. Like, I like, I just in, really enjoyed the bond the, the two characters share, especially when you get to the end of the game where, like, Chip re remembers what his purpose is and all that, all that, and you get, like, a really touching scene between the two of them. Like, that is, that is really nice, and it shows, I, I like how this game shows different sides to Sonic's character, that you don't really see too often. I, 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 this is definitely one of my favorite characterizations of Sonic. The the other being Black Knight, which I've already done a playthrough of. I've already done two playthroughs on of. Please don't watch the first one. I don't remember anything I really said in the revisit to that. But yeah, Black Knight is definitely one of my favorite characterizations for Sonic as well, and. Yeah, the story-wise, I'd say Unleashed is pretty good. It doesn't do anything as grand as some of the other games. It's not as crazy as uh, like SA2, Shadow, or 06 in our, in that regard. But I also don't think it really needs to be. I like the fact that like there's a world-ending threat going on, but I also like how it just feels like a world. A globe-trotting adventure with two friends just exploring the planet. I like how different all the co different cultures are, and you can just just fill that with the the environment, the music, like the food you can buy, and the inhabitants. Like I I really like how they manage to like portray all these different cultures based on real-world equival equivalents. Like I I mentioned I talked about the about this in. The jungle joy part, uh, night night part, but that is definitely one of my favorite parts of this game, and why it's one of my favorites. 
I, I definitely, I don't know if I'd say that this game has my favorite overall set of stages in the series, but it's definitely up there. Uh, like, Colors would be a pretty good contender, but it's definitely, it, I definitely say it's like top three at least in that regard. And Wimble Isle, like Apatos in general, I'd say it's most likely my favorite opening area for a Sonic game. I just love how the whites and the blues just pop so much with the especially with the ocean and whatnot like it's just just this big white uh this big white city with all the buildings and whatnot just i don't know visually it's just so striking and it's such a unique area for the first like stage of a sonic game and it's it, it get, it's a good like first level to show you the ropes and how things work and whatnot and like even uh, like it's a good tutorial stage and it's also just a good stage in general like it's just a nice little area you can start in and i yeah i, I just like how all the areas are just so distinct from one another and like musically as well like this game has one of my favorite soundtracks in the series it's personally my favorite overall it's it's even, I wouldn't, I would do, bleh, I can words. <laughs> it's also one of my favorite soundtracks just in general. Like, I'd put this up as, I, I'd put this up against like Tropical Freeze as like two of my favorite like OSTs, just period. It's really good and there's so many different styles of music you can find. And nearly all of them are pretty, pretty dang great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not not much I can say about that. It's just really enjoyed the music in this game, especially with, like the Egg Dragoon fight. Like I I really enjoy how intense that that theme is. I like how you can just feel the fact that you're you're falling through the music, and I love how intense that section of the game is. Like the finale of Unleashed is also one of my favorites. Like the Dark Eye fight isn't. The, like the most gracefully designed, like the Gaia Colossus on the HD version leaves a little bit to be desired, I, I will admit that. But ignoring that, I really do like how climactic it feels. And it feels a lot more personal, like this grudge between like Sonic and Eggman is um, at the forefront at, in the finale. And you can really tell that Eggman w really wants to get rid of Sonic in this game. And then you have the Dark Gaia fight, which, again, could be handled a bit better. But I do like how it feels more like a team-up than in other games. So, like, obviously in, like, other games like Sonic, like, was it, SA2 or 06, you were teaming up with, like, other characters. But it was also a lot more separated. You weren't playing as them at the same time. Whereas in this game, you, like, control chip which has a, and then Sonic's like on the Colossus and Sonic attacks Scott Dark Guy when Chip gets close and then you get to the supersonic part where Chip is fighting him while you're trying to take out the shield and whatnot and I feel like it's a lot more dynamic than previous final bosses and again I like how it's more of a team up than previous games where like you're clearly seeing both characters work together to like, take Dark Guy down it, it without going through, like, separate screen, screens or, like, they're all, like, the characters being separated where you don't really see them teaming up. They're kind of just doing their own thing, if you will, with the exception of, like, heroes, I guess. But that that's just kind of based, that's kind of just because of how that game works with the team, team, uh, team mechanic and whatnot. So... Yeah, again, I will say that the, the final boss could be handled a lot better. In terms of game design, it's definitely not, like, amazing or anything. I definitely enjoy it a lot more than most people do. And I do... Overall, I'd say the HD version is stronger. But with the exception of the first part where you have to, like, boost towards Dark Guy, Like, that section is way stronger in the Wii version. I will admit that. But still, it, it's decent. I do like it for what it is, and I, in terms of story significance and being a good Sonic and Chip team up, 
boss, I do really enjoy it in that sense. And also just getting to see what Chip can do is nice. And... Yeah. I kind of just... <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kinda just rambling at this point. There's not too much I can really add. I feel like that's about all I can really say. There's a bunch of just random miscellaneous stuff about the game. Like... I, I really enjoy the hub worlds, they're, they're my favourite in the series. There's a lot to look around and find. I like how the characters are like Pixar inspired. I think that fits a lot more than the realistic stuff they were going for in, in previous games. And I, if they ever bring back humans, I, I would hope that this is the style they go back to. And yeah, that's a about it i think that's about all i need to say like I've, I've been going on for 36 minutes so i feel like i should probably wrap up soon so yeah i guess bottom line unleashed is unleashed hd is my favorite sonic game unleashed we while nowhere near being as high as that i would still rank it pretty high uh and i i enjoy revisiting this game Whenever I do, like whether that be the Wii version or the HD version, and it's generally a good time overall. I, I think again, I think it's a good length. You get a good bang for your buck, whether or not you want to just do the main story or if you want to do all the side content. In both versions, you're gonna get a lot of uh, mileage out out of the game, and yeah, I know Unleashed isn't for everyone, and I I get it. But speaking for me, I think this game is brilliant. Like, I definitely say that. I'd say Unleashed overall is there is a slightly flawed masterpiece. It has some issues that are holding it back, and there are some things that it could do better. But overall, I'd say that this is generally worthy of being considered a masterpiece in a lot of regards. And. Yeah, <laughs> he's hoping that Frontiers can top this game because I would love to be able to gush about a a new Sonic game and not be going into like forces kind of depression <laughs> again. But it is what it is. We 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 will see, and that's about all I need to need to say. So. Thanks for watching this really long-winded <laughs> Final Thoughts, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon for Colors Ultimate. Yes, I'll be playing Colors Ultimate because the game, from what I understand, has been patched a lot, and a lot of the issues are fixed by this point. I won't be going to that game for a little while, though. It's the next Sonic game I'll be, I'll be playing, but I did say in like an update video recently that... After this game, I'll be doing a lot of Mario stuff, and that's what we're going to be doing next. So, I will see you guys next time for Super Mario Land 1. So, yeah, I hope you guys look forward to that. I haven't actually played the game fully for myself before, so that's going to be an inter interesting experience. And, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't need to talk, talk about anything else really so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time goodbye